Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to discuss how to determine and classify the critical points of functions of two variables. Now here's the function that we're going to look at in our specific example. We're going to locate the critical points and then we're going to classify them in the sense that are they local min, local max or are they a saddle point? Now a saddle point is kind of like a general version of a point of inflection. But before we get to that, let's motivate our, uh, our study here. Well, first of all, functions of two variables, they enable us to model complicated phenomena in a more accurate way than, for example, by using the functions you would have seen at school. And in modeling, the determination and classification of critical points is very important uh, because with lots of applied problems, you want to uh, find for example, an input that will lead to a maximum, an input that will lead to a minimum, and, and so on. But anyway, let's build our intuition. Let's, let's do a, a problem. The first thing we're going to do is to determine the critical points of this function. Okay, so we need to understand that the cri critical points of f occur when the partial derivatives are zero. Okay, so what, what we'll do, we'll calculate these partial derivatives and by the subscript I mean f sub x is the partial derivative of f with respect to x, f sub y the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So let's calculate these partial derivatives and then solve two simultaneous equations. So to calculate this I imagine all the y's are constant and I differentiate normally with respect to x. And to calculate f sub y df dy I imagine all the x's are constant and differentiate normally with respect to y. So let's set these two derivatives equal to zero and then solve. Okay, now here I can cancel off the threes and rearrange get the following. So these are the simple equations that we're going to work with. Now firstly I see that both y and x are something squared so what it, whatever answer we come up with here both x and y should be non-negative. So I can take this x and substitute it into the first equation so I'll get y equals y to the power 4. Just by substituting this in for x here. And so what I can do is rearrange this and form the following. Okay, so I'm going to take out a common factor of y Oops. so either y is 0 or y cubed minus 1 is 0 in both those cases I'll get the following okay so I get two values, possible values for y, and what we're going to do now is calculate the corresponding x components associated with each of these y's, and I can just take y equals 0, sub it in here, and I'll get x equals 0, and 
and if y equals 1, I can take it and substitute y equals 1 here, and I'll get x equals 1. So, we've calculated our critical points now. Okay, so, 0, 0, and 1, 1. So that's the first half of the question done. The second half involves classifying, okay? Does F have a local max, a local mean, or a saddle point at this point? And similarly, what about this point? Now, to do that, we're going to classify these these critical points, we're going to use an idea called the second derivative test. Now, essentially, if a comma b is a critical point, and we define d in this way, then what we do is look at the, the sign of these expressions here, and as the name suggests, the second derivative test involves second derivatives. So, to classify, our critical points via the second derivative test. Okay, so let's calculate this general D at a general point XY So again, the subscripts here refer to the second derivative. Okay, so here we need to calculate these second derivatives. Well, f sub x is this, f sub y is this, so f sub x x will be 6x, f sub y y will be 6y, and f sub x y will be minus 3. So we can now substitute in here and get a general expression and we'll get this. Okay, so let's go to our first critical point, 0, 0, and test this D. So if I sub in x equals 0, y equals 0, I'll get 0 here and I'll get minus 9. Now that's negative. So let's go to our second derivative test and see if we can make some conclusion. If we look at part 3 here, if this d is negative, then f has a saddle point. So we conclude that F has a saddle point, which is kind of like a general point of inflection. Okay, what about the other critical point? Well, let's classify that. So we go up to D, sub in x equals 1, y equals 1. We're going to get 36 minus 9, which is going to be positive. So let's go to our second derivative test. Well, it's going to be either case 1 or case 2. We have to look at this second derivative with respect to x. So f sub x, x is 6x, so when x equals 1, we'll get just 6, and that's positive. So if we go back to our second derivative test, it's the second case. So f will have a local minimum at 1, 1.
Okay, so that's our, our question finished. We've located our critical points of F, we've classified them using the second derivative test. So let's look at, a, at the bigger picture here. What are some ideas that you can use in general? Well, assume that F is continuous and has continuous partial derivatives up to and including all of those of the second order. Now this assumption was automatically satisfied by the example we looked at because it was a polynomial. Determine the critical points of F by solving these simultaneous equations involving F sub X and F sub Y. Now, once we've located our critical point, if we define D in the following way, then the nature of the critical point or points can be determined by the second derivative test. Now, it's important to realise that if this D is zero, so you, you plug in A and B and you get zero here, then the second derivative test cannot be used and some other method or technique is required. Now, it's important that you learn maths by doing maths. So I've included an example here. Determine and classify all the critical points of this function here. Now, it's very similar to the example that I've just shown you.